So we as scientists need to be able to speak the same language as other scientists, even if we don't live in the same country. And it's really important in a global world, a global society, especially a society of science, where um, the importance of sharing the information and publishing results so that other people can be working with the same knowledge and we're all working together to broaden the overall base knowledge of science. Um, the scientific community needs to have the same language that we speak and so when we're doing measurements we need to have a standardized system of units and these units are called SI units and it stands for International Standard Units or International System of Units so either way you get your S here and your I here okay um, and so you might wonder why isn't it IS instead of SI but it actually comes from the French which is this one here um, which I'm not even going to try because my French is terrible. So um, the SI comes from the system international there in the middle of your French units. So France was really at the forefront of uh, chemistry back in the day, uh, along with England and a couple of the other European countries. And so um, they've had a lot of a hand in, in putting together these standards by which we do business, by which we do science. So I want to talk a little bit about SI units and again these are just the units that we use uh, to measure different things and we in the US use this crazy outdated system called the US customary system so this stands for United States customary system you might have heard of this in the past as the imperial system that comes from England or the British system, or the English system. Okay, so all of these mean the same thing. The USCS is what we currently use in the US. There's only two other countries in the entire world that use the same system. One of them is um, uh, Liberia, and the other one is uh, Myanmar. Uh, so there's that. <laughs> so I think that even Myanmar is working on getting rid of the US customary system or the imperial system. Um, so that's, you know, interesting. Uh, the US likes to do their own thing, of course, so there's that. But we in the scientific community use a different set of SI units, but because we're so used to, we in the US are so used to our own system, I'm going to refer back to the way that we do it in order to give you some context. So let's talk about the different things that we can measure. We can measure length. So if I was talking about, for instance, the length of this pen, right, then you and I might think about the length of this pen in inches, right? So the US customary system for length is inch. Or if I was talking about the distance between uh, my office in Moses Lake and Spokane, then I would talk about it in terms of miles. So we can also talk about distance that way. So miles, inches, uh, feet is another one. So if I'm talking about the distance between um, myself and my kitchen right now, then I, that would be in feet. Now these aren't very standard ways to measure anything. An inch used to be uh, the measurement of the width of your thumb. Right, so the width of your thumb is an inch, and if you compare your thumb to someone else's thumb, then you can see there would be quite the variability there. Uh, foot used to be uh, an actual king's foot, uh, which again, not super standard when we're all trying to talk about the same length of something. Okay, so for uh, those of us in the scientific community, we use uh, the meter. So you think about a meter stick, um, and in our US customary system, we talk about it in terms of yards. We have a yardstick, right? And a yard is about three feet, and we talk about yards in our um, in American football, that kind of thing. But we use the meter for uh, length in the scientific community. Okay. Uh, the next thing that we could measure is uh, time. So the amount of time that passes, and this is a pretty standard one. We measure it in seconds. Now, of course, we can uh, make that longer periods of time. We can talk about things in minutes or hours, but this US um, customary system doesn't really have a standard length of time there. So I don't really have anything to compare it to, but for those of us in the scientific community, we use seconds. And um, 
Well, that's really useful for us in chemistry because we're talking about teeny tiny things that are happening very quickly in fractions of seconds, tenths and hundredths and uh, millions of seconds. So that's what we use there. Uh, in terms of temperature, you and I use Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit, which is named after some guy who came up with the scale. So Fahrenheit, um, we think about the rest of the world using Celsius. Um, so we will see Celsius oftentimes on our signs. Uh, so we kind of know that there's a relationship between Fahrenheit and Celsius, but that's not the standard that we use in science. In science, we use Kelvin, which is named after Sir Lord Kelvin and he had his own scale. So each of these represents a different scale and there's actually other temperature scales as well, but these are kind of the three most common that you'll run into. And we'll talk about the relationship between these scales in a different video. But we know that our SI unit for temperature is Kelvin. Uh, for volume, And again, we'll talk about volume in a little more detail as well, but volume is, again, how much space something takes up. You and I think about volume in terms of gallons, right? We go get a gallon of milk, we go get a pint of beer, right? So those are all imperial or British units. Um, we know a little bit more about SI units in the U.S. because we have two liter bottles of soda, and the liter is our SI unit. So two liters is two times the base unit for the SI system, which is the liter, which is just abbreviated with a capital L. Now we said that chemistry is the study of matter, which is anything that has mass and occupies some sort of space. So I just talked about volume. And so now let's talk about measuring mass. Again, we'll talk about each one of these in a little more detail when I do a video on measurements. This is just gonna be on the units themselves. So when I stand on a scale, I usually think about seeing my weight in pounds, right? So I talk about how massive I am, which coming out of winter is way more massive than I would like coming into bikini season. And so we think about things in pounds. We also think about things in tons. That's another U.S. customary system measurement of mass. Um, but in the SI unit, the way that we talk about it in science, it's the kilogram. And kilogram is the only one, it's the only SI unit with a prefix. And that prefix kilo means that it's 1,000 times the size of the base unit. So in the metric system, we have base units, for instance, the gram. And if I have 1,000 grams, that is equal to one kilogram. Okay. So it's 1,000 times the base unit. So one gram is really tiny. Um, and one kilogram is actually not that large either. One kilogram is like 2.2 .2 pounds or something like that. So it's really not a huge uh, mass. But when we're talking about things like the mass of an atom or an electron or something, then we need something that's fairly teeny tiny. Just as an aside, you know that pounds is abbreviated LBS. Have you ever wondered why that is? Like why something is that many pounds? Or if you see broccoli in the store, then it's $1.30 a pound and you see this LBS. It actually comes from the constellation Libra, or at least the same word as it. And Libra means the scales. So if you know anything about astrology, uh, Libra has that kind of balancing thing. It's the scales. And so the LBS stands for Libra, which just I think, I always think is kind of interesting. All right, so we talked about length, we talked about time temperature, volume, mass. We're also going to talk a little bit about energy in this class. And we're going to talk about the places that we get energy, but we'll also talk about the energy of chemical reactions a little bit as well. And energy is measured in joules. It's abbreviated with a capital J for joules. Um, and it's named after a scientist, Jules. And 
we in the U.S., and we'll talk about this in a little more detail again when we talk about measurements, we use calories. So when we see uh, food packages, for instance, and we're looking at how much energy we can get out of said food, then we're reading um, the calorie information, the caloric intake, whereas in other countries we will usually see packages and usually it's in kilojoules, joules are pretty small. And again, we'll talk about that relationship later. Okay, so length, time, temperature, volume, mass, energy, these are all things we can measure about matter. And again, matter is kind of the name of the game when it comes to chemistry. And the last thing that I want to introduce here, but I'm going to talk about in more detail when we get to later chapters, is the amount of something. So how much or how many. So if I'm talking about like a count, for instance, one of the things that we use in the US customary system is the dozen. So a dozen tells us that there's 12 in that particular package. Or we use a gross, not to be confused with Miss Gross, me. A gross is 144 of something. So we combine things together. We don't want to count individual uh, donuts, say, or we don't want to count individual paper clips. So we have a gross of them, which means there's 144 in that one package. When we're talking about atoms, we need something quite large, and we use what is called the mole. And so we'll talk about moles in more detail later on. I just wanted to introduce you to the term there. It is our SI unit for talking about how much or how many. Okay, so that's a little bit about units, and we'll talk a little bit more about how we do each of these measurements in another video. So if you have questions on this, let me know. Otherwise, I'll talk to you soon.